Well, then, then let's start for now. Um, the previous session was just above, uh, so now is a more general overview about what is the status currently in Debian Squeezy, in what kind of a world do we live currently. First, I want to introduce the PKG Multimedia team. The PKG Multimedia team is a team that was formed or recreated uh, during the Squeezy cycle. Before that, we had actually two teams, and both were of pretty, weren't that active teams, I'd say. At, at some point, we identified, well, the, why do we need two teams, actually? And um, the other team was called, um, Adrian, what was it called? Debian Multimedia, Dmoody? Yeah, D exactly. Dmoody team. And we agreed on the name uh, PKG Multimedia. Um, and, well, if you want to reach us, this is our, our um, mailing list. All of our packages are, uh, have this as maintainer field, and we can be found on OFTC uh, in the channel DB Multimedia. Okay, so what is the multimedia world? In the multimedia world, we are talking about new media. We had the Myth TV talk before, so, and who, uh, the people, the folks that attended the talk uh, of Myth TV, uh, they were also already raised the question about libraries and how they interact and don't interact and source copies and everything. So this is very typical for a multimedia kind of software where we have to do also some upstream work as maintainers to identify the source copies and to see what dependencies there are and can they be removed or compiled against system copies and uh, um, uh, that stuff. We're talking here about digital TV. People nowadays do want to watch, to, to use um, a DVB terrestrial satellite or cable. Uh, but we're also talking about uh, we want to provide um, medias and uh, movies and trailers and, some, and all that kind of stuff on your smartphone or your iPad. And all these devices have different requirements, have different requirements on how movies have to be compiled for uh, and what options do we need. And the, the, the most pressing problem about this, this changes very, very fast. Um, every half a year there's a new device that needs some different codecs, some diff subtle different options that improve quality better, and uh, that's, that's a really, really challenging task here. Um, if we only look about uh, codecs, uh, in the last five years uh, there has been an immense boost of um, this um, H264-AVC dash um, um, codec. Um, if you see some papers or some uh, uh, Wikipedia articles about AVC. AVC is the technical, it's the marketing name of the MPEG-LA. So H.264 and AVC is basically the same. Uh, the codec that it's, and it's still very, very widespread uh, out there is um, the, the MPEG-4 visual codec. MPEG-4 visual is very, very similar to, it, now it, it's, it's pretty similar to uh, H.263, but it's standardized also uh, in the MPEG-4 uh, fa uh, uh, family of standards. Recently, uh, Google has entered the HTML5 game. You have perhaps heard uh, there's a new HTML5 standard upcoming. This new standard will include um, an, the video tag so that you in order to, provide, uh, to publish a video on your, uh, on your website, you no longer uh, need to require users to install some proprietary additional plugin, but they, you can rely, okay, this is HTML5 video, so your browser needs to be able to play it back. Um, there was a, a huge discussion about uh, what codec is going to be used. Is it H.264 or is it Theora? And now Google has answered this question. So now uh, um, we propose to use uh, WebM and VP8 for this. So the race isn't over yet. Um, we st there's still no general agreement of what codec will, uh, will make it. But I think we, as in Debian, should encourage uh, the developers of um, uh, the, uh, the uh, VP8 to uh, um, uh, to, to, uh, to make this uh, codec more widespread. And I will personally work on to have um, the, um, uh, 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 the video recordings trans uh, published as uh, VP8. 
let's try if we can manage this for the this step con. And there's of course the thing with DRM. This was also mentioned in the in two talks before, which makes it also very challenging. The uh, Blu-rays have a technically different, but from from the user point of view, very similar problem with uh, encryption. So you will need some additional packages to in order to 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 decrypt your legally bought well, um, um, uh, 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 Blu-ray discs. So as I said, um, we um, have an extremely fast evolving technology and we hardly manage to keep up with uh, these in, in unstable. And currently stable users, especially stable users in, in Lenny basically lose. So for all these new kinds of media, r just running stable is, is pretty hard. And uh, this is also why we had the buff uh, just right before of us. I, I, I didn't know the scheduling before the talk. Currently, stable use generally lose, but as we have seen in the uh, talk before, uh, we are working on fixing this or to providing some intermediate measures so that we can provide stable users some ways to uh, pr uh, think. Why is um, backporting actually so hard? So um, just to give you an overview about the, the multimedia stack that we are talking about, how to output audio on your physical actual output device. Well, in order to output on your physical audio device, you generally, in Linux, we use also the advanced Linux uh, sound architecture, but there's the packages that's using OSS. For example, our FreeBSD kernels only provide OU, uh, OSS. And for FireWire sound cards, so many laptops still have um, these Firefire connection, you generally only have uh, this FF8.0 library there is no alternative driver, so there is no other driver an OSS driver for a certain set of, uh, of uh, professional sound cards. And this, this sums up. Um, we have several kinds of audio demands. We have uh, uh, GStreamer is, is a library that um, modularizes output modules it can, uh, and uh, video modules, so, so you basically create a, create a pipe. The application says, well, I want to create, here's, here's um, a, a source with a movie file, so please open this file and uh, put it out to this um, author sync or pulse audio sync. And this is only the, the if, if you think this is fail, you're totally right, but the thing gets even worse if you consider about um, um, decoding libraries and demultiplexing libraries. And what we actually try to do is to for Squeezy plus one to make this um, uh, much more simpler. So this is our view how it should look like. And other distributions are also working on this plan. So this is ongoing work on um, Squeezy plus one and we could really need help with that. So if you're interested in cleaning up our current, uh, current stack, feel free to uh, discuss this with, uh, with us. Um, on top of that, we, we still have an, another bunch of packages and uh, libraries that stack up on this. So, um, what are possible solutions to this? This is basically the, uh, uh, what we have talked about. This uh, Debian backports has been proposed, uh, Debian Volatile has been proposed, or a new archive. Um, we really need to talk about the different, uh, built uh, the different infrastructure maintainers, Volatile, backports, and uh, the built network, if they think this is uh, feasible, especially with the release managers. So if the stable release manager, if they are going to accept such a transition. And uh, why we really do want to do this in Debian is because um, we really want to reuse existing Debian infrastructure for quality assurance and bug reporting and uh, stuff like this. Okay, so I have um, ready for this uh, part. Now Adrian is taking over. Thank you, thank you. So we're actually now in the second part of our talk. As you might have noticed, the first one was about playback and as we call it, the consumer side of multimedia and we're now heading to the uh, second part, uh, the pro and we want to understand that pro here means producer, uh, not necessarily professional, also uh, pro pro producing. So foremost and already mentioned FF8, the free firewire audio drivers, um, we now have them and we will have them in Squeeze. So this is good news for everyone who owns a Firewire-based audio card. We're actually packaging the SVN trunk of FF8.0 because newest everything. Uh, there is a, there's more device support. Um, where, no, um, time is up. Um, hello? Oh, I'm, on, I'm still on, okay.
So if you have a FireWire audio card, just install JackD FireWire and that's it, basically. Speaking of which, we uh, had a Jack transition. Both of you who use Jack might have noticed it, that it was slightly broken during the last few weeks, but uh, as far as I know, it's almost over the transition now. And uh, I can say we are, at least to my knowledge, the first distribution ever providing both versions of JackD. There's JackD1 and JackD2 developed by Upstream, and uh, JackD2 2 is by no means a successor of JackD1. This is just a completely different code base. JackD1 is pure C and JackD2 is C++. While JackD supports SMP, uh, multi-core processors and the lot, and JackD1 does not. Um, there are reasons to have JackD1 uh, or JackD2. If you want the one or the other, you already know this. Uh, We're not going into detail here. In theory, JackD2 could provide perfect pulse audio integration because it's talking to pulse audio via DBus. Unfortunately, it doesn't work. It's an upstream bug. Um, hopefully, we'll fix this for Quiz plus one. Anyway, for producer audio, you normally have two sound cards in your machine, uh, so or you don't even run any uh, consumer software like Flash. So in a studio, this isn't actually a problem. But bottom line here is you can either say install JackD1 or JackD2, whatever fits best for you, uh, and there you will have it. We also have uh, updated quite a lot of production tools. I would like to mention Hydrogen. Uh, most work was done by Jonas sitting here in front. Hydrogen is a really capable drum sampler. I will show it later to you in a demo session. Um, who's doing audio production? OK, some people. Um, let's see what we can do with Hydrogen. We now have the 094 in squeeze. No? Yeah, no? It's a problem with the transition jack. Okay, uh, modular jack transition, but uh, it's Spark, Spark as far as I know, and I was able to build the Spark yeah. package. There seems to be a build daemon broken or whatever. We also have LV2, and this is big news for everyone who already did audio production on Linux. What's LV2? LV2 is Latspar version 2. Latspar is a or was the audio plugin API in Linux, and unfortunately, Latspar was crap. Um, there was no way of having a graphical user interface for uh, your plugin, uh, a thing that other platforms like Windows or OS X provided for years. Don't quote me, but I would say for 10 years or so. So Linux was really lagging behind here. And now we have LV2, and the most important change in with LV2 is we have graphical audio plugins. And uh, we have quite a bunch of LV2 plugins in Debian already. Uh, I've mentioned a few of them on top. Uh, I would like to put some stress on Cough because Cough really is cool. We will see it later. So uh, this basically is a library. Uh, and an API, and you won't gain anything from a library without host support. So, lucky thing is, we also have applications, host applications supporting this new LV2 uh, plugin standard, uh, especially Ardour. We've updated Ardour to version 2.9.11, uh, modular jack transition, yeah. Uh, but I'm sure we will have it there. So this is the most up-to-date Ardu package in the whole Debian derivatives for now. We are well uh, ahead of everyone else, including 64 Studio, AV Linux, and whatever. So uh, when Squeeze comes out, I'm sure for this very moment we provide the best audio experience uh, on Linux you can get um, out of the box. Okay, you can always tweak a little more. Uh, in addition to Arrow, there's also Q Tractor, um, kind of a new kid on the block. Still a lot of development, but it can do some MIDI. For Squeeze Plus One, we would hopefully see Ardu with MIDI support. Uh, let's see, they are pre alpha state right now, so there was absolutely no use in including it. It's crashing all the time. But I think that's fine for development stuff. So this is the good news from the presumer, uh, producer side, and I would now like to spend um, 
the remaining time on showing you these tools in action. So um, I now dive into my laptop here and switch to hydrogen, as already mentioned. Hydrogen is a drum sampler, and uh, let me show you how it works. You basically start first with loading a kit. Um, perhaps we load a techno drum kit. Then change the speed of our song to, let's say, 128, whatever, and um, start with them. Uh, can you turn up uh, the volume for the, for the laptop? OK, you can hear. That's what we do. And when we play this back, we already have a, yeah, it always should work. To, get it, to make it a little bit more interesting, we put in some additional kicks on one and three, and also place a snare on two and four. And to make it more interesting, a second snare together on four. If you play that back, so we're getting closer to beat. Now let's add, oh, from a musician, a musician would always play the first note a little louder than the others. Let's adjust it here. I think that's fine. So now let's put in here some fancy toms. OK, and each decent house track needs a hi-hat. Hi-hat always comes to the offbeat. So is it off? No, here it is. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's scrolling. The resolution has slightly changed what I used to have. Okay, I guess this would probably be enough for uh, <laughs> German music or so. Uh, no. So you see what hydrogen can do? Um, I've also prepared a groove that I call salsa, so it's not actually real salsa. Let's see if all the notes are there. Well, yeah, looks like. Uh, as you might have already noticed, I've loaded a percussion drum kit, so if you played, we have other sounds here now. Uh, because uh, you probably won't play either with some um, techno synth uh, drums. So how does it sound? Uh, perhaps make it a little slower. I'm sure you get the impression what hydrogen is for. Uh, you could s spend your whole afternoon uh, just... It is, it's really called programming beats. So if you want this, you can use it. And uh, let me also add that hydrogen um, is, a, is good compared to commercial stuff uh, because it supports this multi-layered drums. You don't uh, need to have one sample for each drum. You can have multiple, and then it's cycling through these layers in a round-robin fashion. So you get a more human feeling. Um, I think hydrogen is pretty cool to have. So... Um, is this, yeah, and I've prepared a next one. I, I just need to show it. No, I haven't. Uh, I still have to load it because I am going to show you something else later. A little slower, but uh, don't know how fast it was. So, that nah, was too slow. Okay, that's a beat I made with uh, hydrogen and then recorded into Ardour. I've already uh, mentioned Ardour here, um, and here it is. I hope you can see it. And when I now start play, or uh, let's, let's put it in here, there's the beat. That's exactly what we had in, um, in hydrogen. I fired it via Jack D into Ardour and uh, then recorded some more stuff. You can see here the bass and the synthesizer and uh, lots of stuff. Uh, I'm now just playing and you will uh, be able to watch the slider going over the song so you can see what Ardor actually does. Uh, I would like to put some stress here. This is a fade in, so this means um, audio is getting louder. This is a cross fade, some blend of one into another. You all know this when you're doing audio production. Uh, just uh, 
for those who are not common with it. So now start at the bass. It's, uh, I would call this loop-based editing. You have all these uh, snippets or regions that they are called in audio. Now fade in section. I guess we can skip this. As you can see, um, oh, I put this song on the net uh, just somewhere uh, and pointed to some friends. And when I w was um, at a birthday party, I suddenly recognized, oh, they are playing this song I made a couple of weeks before. Uh, so it seems actually people like it. Um, the bottom line is uh, you can use Linux for all your production. Is it released as open source? Uh, yeah. Uh, it's not okay. released, but uh, if you want to have it, yeah, we could link it on the DevConf wiki. In perhaps including the uh, the session material if you want to remix it or so. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there's a question in the back. I I wanted to know um, what do you think of the Dynebolic distribution? Uh, G, what is D Y N E B O L I C? It's been there for a very long time, and it's totally dedicated to uh, pro uh, recording. Oh, and it has order. It has uh, tons of stuff in there. I am afraid I never <laughs> heard yeah. of that. Uh, and I, I the, the question I want to know is that do you use a real time kernel for this, or you can do it on any kernel? Uh, I always use vanilla kernels or distro kernels, but not real time kernels. Oh, uh, good, you mention it. We have real-time uh, POSIX priorities with JackD. So if you install JackD, it will take care that you end up with uh, these RT priorities. Uh, but we don't have a real-time kernel. Even, even if it's not enabled in the kernel? Or? Uh, yeah, yeah, even if it's not enabled. And it's uh, for if you don't target for real low latency, let's say one millisecond or so, uh, then it's sufficient to have this standard kernel. And it works. I never used anything else, okay. even with FF80, which is a user level FireWire driver right. and uh, subject to uh, yeah, kernel user level round trip. Yeah. I think also that Dynbolic has clustering capability. So if you want to use, if you, it, it's made to run on old systems. Yeah. And if you want to combine all the old system you have in your house to use it for music, it can actually do that. I reckon they are using JackNet for this. Uh, I. Didn't, I just read their documentation, so I've never tried it. I don't know the uh, intricacies of uh, the distro, but it's worth to be to take a look at. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I think we really should uh, just to make this sure. All your production on Linux is done by let's say five to ten people at all, and uh, we're sort of lagging behind every other system, especially on the plug-in side. I think Ido is a pretty decent digital audio workstation, but it only uh, caters for you to arrange snippets and cut and do some fades and automation <laughs> like this. But uh, as we will see now, we need lots of uh, plugins. And um, this is 
in the second session I've loaded for you. Um, i just start. Um, a girl came into my office and said, I, have, I had an idea, here's my song. And we recorded it. Um, and I'll play you the original version, uh, just a few seconds. She's half French, half German. The cold, darkness the pronunciation me, I'm might be a little bit unusual. In front of the ocean and the wind blows in my hair. The wind blows in my hair. My view is lost in the horizon. I feel the sand under my feet. And only one step, only one step. And maybe Okay, that's enough for the original. Uh, and I will now play you the result after tweaking it with Ardur and uh, only tools we have in Debian. And then we'll go into detail what to do and where to do. The night is cold, darkness surrounds me. I'm standing alone in front of the ocean and the wind blows in my hair. My view is lost in the horizon I feel the sand under my feet And only one step, only one step And maybe I could be free And every day and all the night The same game is starting again The same game is starting again I can see And so on, as you can hear, a lot of delay and effects. Um, so, what were the first steps? The, the original recording wasn't tied to a beat. So, if you fire them up, you will instantly notice they're not matching. It's, cold, darkness around me. I'm standing it's completely off the beat. So uh, what I had to do first was to cut the vocals so they, they are matching. Um, it's what you can basically see here in the uh, pink track. This is, uh, these are all cuts just to get the vocals aligned to the bars. And uh, then I fired up my keyboard and uh, played some strings. Good job stuff. Nothing special, uh, so let's stick to the the piano. If you play it back, so you can hear it is uh, rather basic. And then I decided to add a room, so it sounds a little bit more yeah, like a movie. And uh, we have the cough reverb plugin for this. As you can see, 2.5 seconds approximately of delay and um, if we add this I'm sure you can hear the difference so if you're looking for this effect then install C-A-L-F or CALF as I pronounce it what might be wrong so, um, and together with the strings, this is one could argue that the strings might be a little bit too loud, but uh, it's easy to tweak them here. Um, so, what you do with the vocals? Um, let's hear the vocal again, it's there, and switch off everything else. I can't really describe it 
I don't wanna buy top. Okay, basically the first thing you do with vocals is uh, not the first, but some people put it first is a compressor. We now have um, only feel it. I can't really describe it. I don't want it, but I don't have no choice, no chance to run away. So if you're into audio production, you know what a compressor is. Um, I won't go into detail here because it makes no sense for non-audio production people. Uh, the good news here is we have a graphical user interface, and that's exactly what I've been talking about when I mentioned LV2. This is LV2. Without LV2, you won't have this, but we now have it, and I'm glad we have it. Um, so we have a compressor pushing the signal a little bit up. Only feel it, I and if you add this uh, into the mix, um, you will notice that it's a little bit dull, still dull. Only feel it, I can't really but only one step, only one step, and maybe I could be free. And reason for this is the vocal is buried in the strings. Um, so the usual approach to get this right is to apply an EQ. Uh, I've used a normal filter here, a high pass filter, cutting off the bottom, and in the end, uh, the signal, the vocal becomes more clearly. I don't know if you can hear it where the speakers are at home in the street, but only let's try it. The vocal. And all the night, the same game is starting again. The if same I would tweak the frequency here, again. you know what this filter does. I can't see it, only feel so this is it. I can't really describe it. I don't want if you are into I techno, no you've probably no heard stuff like this. Away. Okay, we're not playing. Uh, anymore with it. What was it? It was a 12 dB high pass around 150. So uh, it's okay for the demo session. Um, well, and then uh, we added <coughs> some some reverb to these to the vocals. Uh, they are here. And only one step, you could barely hear them. If I increase the scent level, I could be free. it's getting obvious. And every the same game is starting again. The same again. game is starting again. Okay. I can't see it only. So the key is to keep it subtle. And um, together with the reverb, we had a vintage delay. Uh, let's play it solo. And only one step, only one step, and maybe I could. You can be clearly free. hear the delay, probably a little bit too loud. And every day. And all the night, the same game is starting again. So this is what a delay does. The same does. game is starting again. I can't and now we're back to the whole song. Only feel it. I can't really describe it. I don't want it, but I don't have no choice, no chance to run away. I can't see. So that's basically is it. I would like to save some minutes for the question and answer section. So, uh, so much from my side and uh, we're now waiting for your questions, if any. My question is, um, how do you get uh, multiple inputs? Do you have an external mixer that you mix in or do you, do you capture the sound through a special outboard engine, or do you use your onboard uh, sound card? No, I never use onboard sound, um, and I guess no studio does. Okay. It's an FF80 based FireWire audio interface, the okay. Lasis IO14. Mm -hmm. uh, so you yeah. use a FireWire card on, yeah, yeah. Your, on your laptop? Uh, exactly. Okay. It took me approximately three months to hack the port into Fire, uh, FF80 for this special device because there was no help from the vendor. Um, 
and Lazy is, isn't interested in helping at all. So we have no specs how this device works, uh, but basically, or in the end, we were able to get it working. Okay. And it's there on my desk, and I use it all the time. Okay, thanks. Could, could I have your stand or your just your your statements on uh, FireWire using FireWire for audio compared to USB-based uh, breakout boxes? Well, that's a really different, uh, difficult question. Uh, let me point out there are quite a couple of FireWire-based audio devices with high channel count. So uh, if you many channels, a lot of channels there. I'm not aware of any USB-based device that supports 50 channels or so, but uh, you can buy this for FireWire-based, like the RME FireFace 800. Um, there is a USB support, no, thing is USB 1.1 works with Linux, USB 2.0 usually doesn't. So uh, USB devices are, in most cases, not an option. So uh, on the other hand, FF802 is a user level driver, um, and it's far away from stable. Uh, it is stable, it is working, you can record, and even without a real-time kernel. But if you want to get decent stability and not run into the risk of ruining your recording, you would clearly buy PCI or PCI Express. And if you're on a laptop, this probably means Express Card or PCM CIA, which is quite a good thing because RME, they probably one of the best uh, vendors of audio hardware, uh, provides Linux driver support on other, so you don't uh, have to mess with user level driver drivers. And uh, yeah, there are some fancy ARM e cards offering 64 channels in and out at the same time for Express card on your laptop. So if you need this, uh, just spend 1,000 euros for this card and then you have it. There are cheaper options too, like the uh, HD SP Hammer 4 series which is around 300 or 400 euros or so for a multi-channel card, where multi-channel means something around 14 to 20 or so. I'm not an RME sales representative. <laughs> <laughs> but these cards are really good, and they provide Linux support, and they help us, and they help everyone. So I guess it's fair to mention them in contrast to, let's say, Alesis. They ignore Linux. Okay, um, I know a little bit about Dynabolic, um, and it's, and then there's also like 64 Studio, and there's also another one called Pure Dyn, which is they're all kind of similar things. And I was wondering, um, so Pure Dyn is actually Ubuntu-based. Dynabolic, I don't know, but I was wondering if there's ways that we can, I mean, the, to get all this kind of efforts merged, um, and your thoughts. I mean. From my point of view, I guess we could tell them all to join the package multimedia team. <laughs> Is that a, a good option? Well, um, if, if I may. Um, yeah, yeah, uh, yes, please. please. Well, um, I think at the beginning of the talk, I'm, I, have, I wanted to point out that the PKG multimedia team is a relatively new effort, and we invite everyone to, um, uh, to uh, get in touch with us in order to, uh, and we f really focus about getting things into Debian, and we are generally pretty open. There are some, so there are some team rules that basically say, well, we expect you to, to f generally follow what's going on on our mailing list and to uh, pay attention what uh, other things that, but other than that, there are no strict rules. And so, sure, if you know about um, uh, other projects uh, that could benefit uh, from having their packages or their work integrated into Debian, uh, this is a collaborative uh, effort to get uh, packages like this in. And uh, this was also the, uh, one of the motivations to give this talk to show we do exist, what work do we have, what problems do we have, and to invite others like the, uh, the parties that you have mentioned to, to join us and get in touch with us. Let me, let me add here that we'll, we have a couple of Ubuntu developers also in our team. So at least with Ubuntu there's some kind of coordination and 
they're using our packages and doing stuff for our packages, this actually works quite good. And AV Linux is also uh, teaming up with us. Um, yeah, AV Linux, it's a one-man show specialized. I think focuses more on nonlinear video editing. Is there any communication with uh, as far as I know, uh, you've been, or do you want to, to re-ask your question? I just, I, uh, is there any, has there any been any communication with the 64 studio people? As far as I know, Free is from? Yes, Free uh, has been pretty much involved, if not he's one of the, of the driving forces of 64 studio. He was one of the first um, members of PKJ Multimedia. Um, to be honest, I haven't heard much about him recently because he's buried in, in other stuff. But generally, yes, we, at least in the past, we have been pretty uh, in close contact with 64 Studio, yes. Should we wave into the camera? <laughs> hey. <laughs> no. <laughs> Further questions? Is there a tool in uh, Debian, uh, I'm, uh, I sing in a choir, and uh, where you could scan a partition and let the different voices play, and then, uh, does that exist? Uh, so you want OCR for music sheets? And, right. Uh, and Rose Garden can do that? No, it's OCR for Rose Garden. Uh, the other? He said Rose Garden. Yeah, I I haven't yeah, heard yeah, yeah. I haven't heard about this way around. Uh, as far as I know, Rose Garden can be used to produce these sheets, uh, but not uh, to re-import scans and play it back. Uh, I must confess that's not what I'm working on, so I might not be the ultimate expert here. Um, perhaps someone in the audience could comment on that. Paul. I just loaded the Wikipedia page about Music OCR and there are two open source apps based on Java. So it's a possibility. Have a look at the Wikipedia page. Thank you. Please file a request for packaging uh, bug report. It will help, seriously, it's not a joke. It will help a lot to have requests for packaging. And that's one thing. When you do a request for packaging, that's all, for, first of all, generally for Debian. That's like the thousand Debian developers and uh, just will maybe not be discovered by others. So what you can do is two things. File a request for packaging and send a nice email to the mailing list. Even if you don't think that you are a geek and you can do the packaging, then send an email to this list and say, hey, there's this package over there. I filed a request for packaging, which means the, the, the simple things of, oh, it is free, and it is here. I found it already. That will help find some people that might be interested in packaging kinds of things like that. If, if I may add um, uh, something to the request for help, um, we have shown you what uh, packaging-related tasks we are focusing currently at, but that's really not all. Um, other things that uh, w uh, technical things that we uh, want to work on is something like these uh, backports. This will uh, require another uh, amount of uh, effort to, to get backports of infrastructure uh, packages like libraries uh, for stable users. And another very important thing that we have only briefly discussed, but we uh, are very interested in having that, is something like documentation. S we imagine, and we could really help from uh, help uh, need help from from non geek users and non technical users. Uh, that could help us with uh, documenting all this uh, this tech uh, what uh, pr uh, producer yeah. audio software is available and uh, in the first step it would be enough to just give some pointers what is available what requirements do we have what hardware do you need uh, uh, what's acceptable um, if, uh, and what you what you can generally expect from um, a Debian squeezy regarding pro audio so if if you're interested in helping uh, us out with that again Please contact us. Yeah, someone surely needs to write some clarification. This is patches. That's more or less how it looks inside Jack D. Oh, okay. The media team is asking us to. to yeah, this is this is patches, and you can see 
uh, these are wires going from one channel here back into another one. This is the FX session. This is the drum sampler there in Zrute. And uh, I can assure you this is a rather basic setup. So once things get complicated, you end up with lots of wire here. And uh, there are ways to keep that clean. Uh, but uh, however, we need some kind of documentation for end users. Uh, if you're used to logic on OSX, you might have seen stuff like this. Um, but anyway, uh, end user experience could still be improved, especially by a manual. Paul? Where do the, where do the samples come from for that piece that you've been playing? Uh, <laughs> glad you've asked. This is a Korg Micro X keyboard. Uh, we were talking about the strings and the bass and not about the drums. Because the drums is, all, is everything in Debian and everything else you've heard is not. Um, this is one of the main drawbacks of audio production on Linux. You don't have uh, virtual instruments. We could probably package Linux sampler and I think we should do. But uh, still you don't have the sounds. You need some sort of sample library providing you with the sound. And there is, to my knowledge, no open source project recording orchestra or other sources of sound and then providing them for free. There was some kind of uh, yeah, project starting, but as far as I know, they never ended up with something you could actually download. So I bought a Korg Micro X. This is a fancy keyboard of this size uh, for 450 euros or so, and uh, yeah, there I get my samples from. Uh, yeah. the, the Sugar Project, the Sugar Project has some few samples that is free software released as free software. Maybe you could uh, separate those so they can be reused. Just ah, uh, you have your own microphone. Yeah. <coughs> and then there's freesound.org. Do you know the site? Yeah, yeah. It's not. I mean, you can get lots of um, samples from it. And there are some people starting to upload sets for samplers on that site. But it's under a C Creative Commons Sampling Plus license, which I don't know if <laughs> is the end. Yeah. No. There's, yeah, they're supposed to change the website to allow people to use other licenses. So hopefully they do that. We, ha we actually have some synthesizers in Debian, Face X and some other M44 or so, Zin, Zap, FX. Um, so as long as you don't have to rely on samples, we have something to offer to you. But if you're used to high quality sample libraries like the Vienna Symphonic Library or a Bösendorfer piano sample, which is three gigabytes in size, um, well, by the giga format. Linux sampler can play giga format, and so you could at least uh, use Linux for producing this. And uh, I know some people actually doing this. This works, but uh, bottom line still is it's not as fancy as on other platforms like OS X, where you have tons of uh, different virtual instruments available. Paul? Could you say something about the scope of the team? Does it cover things like animation software or video production stuff, or is it just low-level stuff and audio um, Perhaps someone from the video team is more qualified to answer this question? No, I think the question was um, if uh, the scope of our team. Uh, of our team, just okay. the scope. Um, yeah, yeah we, uh, this question was raised um, a couple of times in the past, and we generally had a simple test to see if a package qualifies in the team. It basically says, do you find a second person caring for this package? And then we can, uh, it's in, in the scope. So if you propose a new package, you, uh, we generally think uh, that at least one other team member should say, yes, I like, this, I like to see this package as well in the team, and that's generally the test. So it, it really depends on the package, but uh, I think that's... Yeah. We are not strictly limited to audio, not at all. So if there are any fancy video editors we should add, uh, Jonas, please. Yeah. I, one thing that has been in the past uh, is that encoders have been yeah. uh, stalled by patents. So in reality, 
it has mostly been, especially in the video camp, it, uh, but, but both, both video and audio, if you want to like, produce something that is compressed for web uh, publishing or something like that, then you need encoders, and encoders are not in Debian. So all the tools that require these encoders was also not in Debian. So hopefully in the future this will change, but this is not to do with what the multimedia team wants to do. It's what we can do. So. Yeah. Yep. So interests, yes. That was a short answer, I think. So basically, the time is up. Um, uh, do you want to? Say, okay. Really yeah, yeah. Do yes, Wait, right. Has anything changed with the patent stuff in terms of Debian? Have you been able to include stuff? Uh, or um, no? We are not sure. Okay. But we tried. <laughs> we are working. Because on, it, we are working on that, but um, the current status is yet unknown. Right. Because as far as I understood it, it was only certain countries. I mean, it's some key countries, like US. As, as far as I understand, for example, the patents on MP3 have partly expired in some jurisdictions. Uh, jurisdic perhaps you can give it to your neighbors. Do you have some details? To the microphone. To, uh, MP3 patent? Um, take it. Um, take the microphone, please. The, the, the format was um, published, uh, the MP3 format. Uh, I, uh, was published in 1991, and we are supposed to be approaching the 20 years of um, uh, the publication of the MP3 format. Uh, the the Lamy project, um, I don't know if you are familiar with that. Um, we we have actually um, refrain it from distributing uh, binary packages from um, for the reason that uh, we actually don't know about the uh, legislation and uh, we prefer to to refrain from any anybody suing us and uh, but actually we we do expect things to be improving in the sense that uh, some Paintings are going away and leaving our way uh, much clearer um, soon. Uh, you'll be able to play some outdated MP3 files and, and freely <laughs> in your devices. Um, regarding the patents, um, I really um, I'm not really sure about the things in the U.S. Uh, uh, or in my country, uh, those don't, don't exist. And I, I'd expect uh, things, if they exist uh, in other countries, to go away really soon. Okay, thank you. Uh, we're not going into patents any longer. So time is up now. Thank you all for coming. And uh, I think the next talk is almost ready. The video team also needs some kind of time to uh, put in a new tape. So uh, that's it. That's also the end of the Debian multimedia track, and we're now uh, to something completely different. <laughs> <laughs>